So, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, welcome to Wharton. Good to be here. So, you are the chairman of the FCC, which oversees uh, telecom, media, tech type issues. Uh, and a big thing that you deal with all the time is broadband. So, from your perspective, how's the U.S. doing on broadband? Well, we've uh, focused the FCC on broadband because wired and wireless broadband, high-speed internet is our central platform for economic growth and innovation for years to come. Uh, in many, many ways, things are going really well for the U.S. when it comes to broadband. So think about where we were four years ago. If we were talking about mobile broadband, we would have been talking about mobile innovation, and we would have been saying, hey, in uh, Japan and South Korea, uh, there's incredible mobile innovation. In Europe, they're ahead of us on 3G infrastructure. So flash forward now, uh, the U.S. has regained global leadership in mobile broadband. Uh, on infrastructure, the U.S. is the first country in the world getting to scale at 4G LTE, the next generation of mobile broadband. No one else at scale is even close. So we are the world's testbed for 4G LTE applications and services. On the innovation side, it's a completely different world. You know, around the country, they're using American apps, whether it's Twitter or Facebook or Google. Uh, that's what the rest of the world is using. A uh, major change in four years. And then think about uh, operating systems. So four years ago, the percentage of mobile devices globally that had American-made operating systems was under 20 percent. Today, it's over 80 percent. That's a very, very fast change. And so we uh, uh, are strongly positioned to continue to lead the world when it comes to mobile broadband, uh, an incredibly important platform for innovation and economic growth. But we have some real challenges in order to keep that going. So talk a little bit more about some of the things that the agency has done over the past several years to promote that kind of broadband growth, and, and what are you doing right now going forward? I know there's a lot of talk about a spectrum crunch, about not enough capacity going forward. So what's what's on the table? Well, it, you know, one of the things that, that, that we did at the FCC uh, starting four years ago was focus on broadband, focus on the opportunities, focus on the challenges. You know, uh, 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 making sure that we were removing barriers to broadband build-out, whether wired or wireless, uh, uh, freeing up spectrum for mobile broadband. Uh, spectrum is, you know, the invisible infrastructure that makes this all work. Um, uh, one of the things that's happened is that success around mobile broadband is breeding a next generation of problems. So the more that we use mobile broadband in the U.S., the more that we use data-rich applications and services, the more demand there is on Spectrum. Well, Spectrum is a scarce resource, and Spectrum planning in the U.S. never anticipated this kind of demand. So we're in a global bandwidth race. I think this race is like the space race where uh, uh, the winner will see benefits in terms of innovation and economic growth that will last for years to come. Every country around the world wants to be the leader when it comes to broadband. We're in a strong position now. But we're going to run into a wall on spectrum because the demand for spectrum is vastly exceeding supply. And we've got to both use the old policy tools in a really smart way and develop new tools to free up spectrum, to drive spectrum efficiency so that uh, we can keep on encouraging the growth and development of the mobile economy. So one of those new tools is something called incentive auctions, which uh, the FCC just launched the proceeding on a couple of days ago. Could you talk a little bit about what that process is and, and what are some of the benefits? So we're, we're proud of this idea, incentive auctions. Uh, it, we don't uh, here's what doesn't happen when you when you get to the FCC. Someone doesn't come and say, hey, welcome to the FCC. You're the chairman. Here's the warehouse with all the spectrum you can put on the market and make everyone happy. That doesn't happen because all the easy pickings on spectrum have already been taken and done and auctioned. So our challenge now is to, since we can't create new spectrum, although hopefully we'll see te technology innovations that will help and efficiency, and et cetera, um, we have to identify areas of underutilized spectrum, inefficiently utilized spectrum, and reallocate them to mobile broadband. 
One of those areas is broadcast television spectrum, where historically we've over-allocated TV stations so that, for example, in New York, there are 28 full-powered TV stations. It doesn't make sense. Um, but how do you reallocate that spectrum to mobile broadband, particularly when that spectrum, the broadcast spectrum, isn't national uniform spectrum? It's a checkerboard of spectrum in different markets using different frequencies that isn't really usable for mobile broadband. So the incentive auction idea is a mechanism to give broadcasters an opportunity to exit and then allow us to reorganize the broadcast spectrum and reduce it, freeing up new, contiguous, clear blocks of spectrum that we can put on the market for licensed and unlicensed use. Just last week, we um, uh, began the implementation process at the FCC. Uh, uh, this is something that it took a couple of years of developing the idea. The president strongly supported it, and Congress, to its credit, uh, adopted a bold idea to help move the country forward on mobile broadband. Mm -hmm. So you, you mentioned just at the end there, unlicensed spectrum as well, or unlicensed use. Where does that fit into this picture that you described? Unlicensed spectrum, first of all, I should explain what it is. You know, license, unlicensed, you know, the, so when, when, um, when you use your mobile phone uh, from a provider and you're using it on their networks, they have licensed spectrum and exclusive use of the spectrum that they've licensed. Um, when you're using your device not on the cellular networks but on Wi-Fi, you're actually using spectrum that was allocated on a different model. And that model is put it out there and let any um, uh, innovator use it. What we found is that both models are very important. They both generate uh, innovation, investment, economic activity. And we need to um, uh, continue to develop both models. Uh, so freeing up spectrum for licensed auction use has tremendous value. Taking the unlicensed concept to the next level, I believe will have tremendous value too. And so in the proposal that we released on incentive auctions, the auction that we free up primarily will go to uh, adding spectrum to our licensed mobile market where we really need it. But we've also identified spectrum to create for the first time a national uniform band for unlicensed spectrum usable for broadband that will become part of a balanced ecosystem that will uh, uh, really help drive uh, the mobile ecosystem. And I also think gives the U.S. a unique opportunity to be a world leader, not only in spectrum policy, but in the uh, innovative uh, technologies and services that are built on the spectrum platform. So to take a step back and, and ask about broadband in general, including wired broadband, one of the things that uh, the FCC did early on in your term was adopt the so-called open internet rules, dealing with what, what's often called the net neutrality issue. Can you speak a little bit about how that fits in with this agenda that you're talking about on broadband? Yeah. You know, what we want in the United States is um, a framework, rules of the road, that drive massive amounts of private investment and innovation, both to edge early stage technology innovators and disruptors, and to the broadband networks, wired and wireless, that carry the applications and services. Uh, when I got the job, there was a major war between technology companies and internet service providers about net neutrality. It was a destructive war that wasn't providing clear rules of the road and was having a negative effect on investment and innovation, not a positive one. We developed uh, a framework um, that, for the first time, put in place rules to preserve internet freedom, preserve the ability of innovators to innovate, to come up with an idea, put it on the internet, reach an audience, and let the market decide um, whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. So the rules preserve that. First time we've ever had rules like that in the United States, so a very big deal, giving confidence 
to um, uh, apps and services internet innovators, while also providing the certainty that the network companies need to invest in their networks, to upgrade them, and to give us faster speeds. And so in the last two years since we adopted this framework, we've seen an increase in innovation and investment across the broadband ecosystem. Uh, in terms of you know, innovative applications uh, and services, uh, we've seen uh, uh, rapidly growing investment and unbelievable innovation. We've also seen uh, very significant increases in investment in wired and wireless broadband networks, and we've seen both of this even in a period uh, characterized, of course, by a very challenging economy. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are, are there other ways that uh, you look to unleash that kind of uh, competitive energy of the market or, or, or use market forces as opposed to having to tell companies you do this and you do that? Well, uh, the answer is yes. We've adopted uh, an approach that recognizes the power of free markets to drive investment and innovation and uh, value for consumers. One of the things that we worry about in this space, and it's always been an issue in this space, is whether uh, there's the competition we need to drive a successful free market. And uh, that's something that is an issue, will remain an issue. Now, I'm a big fan of efficiency-enhancing transactions that are consistent with a healthy, robust uh, market. And in fact, at the FCC in the mobile space, for example, uh, over the four years that I've been there, we've approved uh, literally hundreds of transactions involving uh, Spectrum and mobile companies, and we've dramatically increased uh, uh, the speed of our reviews. Uh, so they're happening much more quickly, and transactions are getting through. But We've also focused on transactions that present competition issues, transactions that may require spectrum divestitures or other conditions. And there was one transaction that we thought this transaction was just over the line. It would significantly diminish competition in the US, hurting investment, hurting innovation, hurting consumers, and making it less likely that the free market could work. And we blocked that transaction. Right. That was AT&T T-Mobile. Right? That's right. So, so last question. G going forward, what's your metric for success? How do we understand, or how should someone understand if, if, if you and the agency have achieved your goals? I think it's U.S. leadership in wired and wireless broadband. Uh, we've regained global leadership in a series of key metrics. We have the opportunity to continue that. Uh, but we have challenges that we can list. Uh, uh, spectrum crunch dealing with that driving uh, faster broadband speeds in the United States, uh, preserving competition. Uh, we've got to keep working on getting these right so that we drive uh, broadband deployment and adoption everywhere, and that we do it not just looking you know, inside our borders, but recognizing that we're in a global bandwidth race, that in today's world, uh, talent and capital can flow anywhere in the world, and that we need for the U.S. to have a strategic bandwidth advantage so that the capital and the talent flow here, and we can continue to innovate on the broadband platform as the world leader for years to come. Hey, thanks so much for spending time with us. Thanks, Kevin.